Okay. Hello, everyone. Thanks for attending. I'm Baptiste Daroussin. Uh, I'm a FreeBSD developer. I'm a member of the port management team. And I'm here to speak about the new package manager we are going to switch to on FreeBSD. So first, why did we choose to create a new package manager? If you have a look to the tools we use now, you have a look to the code and you see some comments like that saying it should be changed. Things have been written fastly and should be changed soon. It was about 20 years ago and it never changed. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> the tool we have the tool we have currently uh, has no safe upgrade support, so no upgrade support at all, by the way. So if you want to upgrade something, you just remove all your package and reinstall them. It's missing a lot of metadata. You have a lot of information we can have out of the ports that you can't have uh, when you have your package installed. Like uh, if you want to know uh, what is uh, the upstream website, if you want to know uh, what's the license of the package and stuff like that. Uh, it doesn't work pretty well with dependency tracking. Uh, it managed somehow to, to be able to track the dependency when installing the package. But if you are on removing a package, there is some ugly hacks to be able to determine that the package is used by another package and stuff like that. Uh, if you ever tried to run a binary only uh, package management on your FreeBSD system using uh, those tools, you'll understand that it doesn't work at all. And there are, there are many other issues with the current package. PackageNG is an attempt to fix all the stuff. So the first thing we have done is creating a new package format that fits all the new metadata we want and that will work uh, better with new, with new expression things. We rewrote the local database. It's no more any flat files and stuff like that. We have something consistent which is able to track dependency and reverse dependencies. We tried to wrote a simple and easy to use library so to be honest, the library currently isn't, the API or the, the, AB, the library isn't considered as stable. We will consider it as stable for a package ng2 so that we can have some maturation of the library. We wanted to write a single binary uh, so that you don't have to remember oh, it's package underscore things or that. You just have package which is a binary that deals with all the, all the package we have binary repository support, not just something pushed on an HTTP server and then you try to fetch the first package and discover, oh, I need that, I need that. We have a real, real repository support with metadata you can fetch and you can search on your, your metadata. You can, have, you can gather a lot of information out of that. We have binary upgrade support. One of the most important things was to be able to work with the current port, port tree so that we can just create the whole packages uh, from the port tree without having people needed to actually modify their ports or stuff like that. So that we can, act, we can now be, be able out of the port tree to create packages for package ng and for the old package system. We have added to package ng a lot of things that will help to improve the port tree in the future. So when we will drop the support for package install, we'll, we'll be able to add an, a lot of new features people are expecting for a long time in the port tree, just because the package tool do support them. And it helps modernizing the way you can manage package for your desktop or for your servers or for stuff like that. You can just real managing system on that, you can create some, some script uh, on top of uh, Puppet, on top of Chef, on top of stuff like that. It will be just easier to do with PackageNG. The new format is uh, still a tar file. Uh, it's compressed. We support all the compression that uh, LibArchive supports. In the old format, you had a lot of 
plus files which were uh, the different uh, metadata you can have. We have just unified them into a single one, which is written in YAML because uh, it's easy to parse, easy to extend, uh, easy to read if you just extract it, if you're, it's human readable. We are able to deal with empty directories. Uh, if you ever try to create a package that just need, I don't know, a cache directory somewhere, then you can't package that cache directory because it's empty by default. So you'll have to install the package and then mkdir the, file, the, the cache directory. With Package Engine now, you can prepare all your, all your empty directories. You don't need to have any entry for that or stuff like that. We have uh, split the scripts in, in pre-install, pre post-install, and stuff like that. Because uh, with the current package tool, you have one script which is install and one script which is the install, and then you have to write the code to say, oh, it's pre-install or it's post-install. Now you can just separate that so that the, the scripts are, so slow, are easier to write. We added a new new kind of script that doesn't exist in package, in package install, which are uh, the upgrade script, because sometimes you want to do things after an installation, and when you upgrade, you don't want to redo the same things. And sometimes you want to do things during an upgrade, like, I don't know, uh, migrating your data from the old version to the new version and stuff like that, so that you can do that into the, the upgrade script. We had to reinvent the wheel about ABI because we want the package installation to be safe. So we want to be able to determine when we're installing on what kind of system we're installing and if the binary are compatible with, with that. The problem is with the, all those embedded um, CPUs, you have a lot of different ABI available so you can just say, okay, this package is for FreeBSD 10, and your CPU, you have to say it's FreeBSD 10, my CPU, it's 32-byte, uh, 62-byte, or it's Little Indian, Big Indian, it uses the old, ABI, the old ABI, the new ABI, and stuff like that. So we just created a new string, which, is, which you can extend. If you have a new things to add to be able to determine a new ABI, you just had it at the end of the, of the line. And when package, when package engine tried to install the package, if you have a package that could work on all those ABI at the time, you just have some globbing option on it. So you create your package and you say it's for all FreeBSD 10 because it's just a shell script. So it will work everywhere you, you write FreeBSD 10 and start. The local database, we decided to use SQLite to, for the local database so that you just have a single file with everything. It's relational, so we are able to do easily and really fastly the reverse dependency calculation. Uh, it's easy to backup. You just take your, your file and put it on your backup and you can get it. We also still provide a tool to create a backup which is not an SQLite file, so you can, if you don't trust SQLite, you can still back up it and restore it. It's safe. Uh, we use translation everywhere so that if something goes wrong in, during the installation, during an upgrade or during something like that, you won't have a broken database. Anything will just roll back to the previous state, which, we, which was okay. It contains all the metadata you can have out of the packages, so that now you can know when the package has been installed, you can know uh, which option has been used when the package has been built, you can know a lot of things like that. It's, it's extensible. We, we can create our own functions, so we just don't write simple SQL to create database. We have function for us saying, for example, uh, I want package with versions uh, higher than this version, which is not just uh, mathematic, it's a bit more complicated. So we just have a version compare function which is mapped into the SQL and we can extend it as, as much as, as we want. We can safely upgrade that. If tomorrow we change the information we want in the database, 
we can just determine that the local database was from an older version and do everything we want to be able to upgrade to the, what the new database should be. The library itself, so we try to push all, all the things into the library. So that if you, are, if you are willing to create a front end which is different from the one we provide, you don't have to deal with anything with about the package or about upgrade, about the, the repository, everything is bundled inside the library. You just have some high level functions for you. It's written in C, so you can write easily bindings for any language. We try to keep it safe. All the action are done in the library, so you, you just prepare your action and you say, okay, from now, do the job. You don't do it in your front end. We try to maintain a simple API. Uh, I think we managed to do something great in that area. Uh, I think the API is really easy to use, but it could be a lot simplified. So we, we, will, we will simplify that for package ng2. The package command is uh, the front end you have to install the package by default. It has a lot of subcommands, which are all the actions possible on your package. So you have package add, which normally a normal user won't ever use. Uh, it's just to add a package out of a repository. You have package somewhere in your file system, you just do package add this package. This is mostly to be able to script some things or to for the port tree to be able to add package and things like that. But it's not designed for end users. Package audit is there to allow to for you to um, to check your local packages against the known vulnerabilities you could have. It's ex the equivalent of uh, port audit, so it uses exactly the same the same files to to get the vulnerabilities. So if you switch to package ng, you don't need another third party tool to do that. Because in PackageNG, we are able to track if you have installed some stuff as a dependency of other things, we are also able to remove all the orphans. You, if you just remove Firefox, for example, you have tons of dependencies that you don't need anymore. You just do package auto remove and it will remove it for you. Package backup is just to extract all the things that you have in your local database into uh, a tar file plane of uh, YAML files so that you can just back up and restore them. Package check is uh, to, to be sure that your local database is consistent. Uh, if you decided to remove some packages that, which are dependent on and you force the removal and then you discover you still need it, you just do package check, it will discover all the, all the things that are missing and propose you to reinstall them. It does also, other things like checking for the checksums to be sure that you still have the files. So that's exactly what I was about to ask. Obviously, check the hashes. Yeah, it, can, it, does that, it does that. So you do package, package uh, check minus uh, S, and then you check all the, all the checksums of the files to be sure that these are still the one you had with your, your package. Uh, you can do that on package basis on all database. Uh, you have switched minus A, all the database, just my name, your name. You can do globbing, you can do a regular expression. It can also recalculate all the size of the package. Imagine you have modified something, you are happy with the file you have modified, but you still want to know how much size is taken by, by this. You can just recreate all, recalculate all the, the size taken by the package. Package clean is there because uh, when you install from a repository, we have a cache directory with all the package that has been downloaded. And then you sometimes want to clean that up to avoid having all the old packages you don't use anymore. So package clean will just clean up your cache directory. Package create, I think I don't have anything to say about it. Uh, package delete, the same. Oh yes, package create has two two ways to, to create packages. You can create packages out of your local database, but you can just provide it a fake root somewhere with your files in it, and you just give it a plist, and it creates the package out of that. So you don't have to, to have the, package, the, the files inside on your file system to be able to create a package. 
package fetch is basically if you want to do to, to prefetch every package uh, you want to install, you can just do package fetch and then you have all that in your cache and you can reuse them outside. Package fetch can also be used to mirror only a set of package. You say I just want those package, I package fetch them, it will fetch the dependency, you <coughs> take everything from your cache and you can create your own repository with just the package you want. Package info is Pretty straightforward. Package install is the new um, the new way to install packages. You don't add them. You you, you use package install and package install is asks the, re the remote repositories for the package you want and it will just do the calculation to be able to uh, know what dependency is needed. Uh, if your package was already installed and there is a new version remote, it will also automatically detect it and do the upgrade for the given package. Package query is mostly uh, like package info, but designed for uh, for scripts or for stuff like that. You'll have uh, some kind of evaluation string when you can say, I want only this, 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 and this information formatted like that, and I want only those package if uh, this metadata is like that and this one like that. I'll say a bit more about it later. Package search is pretty straightforward. Package set is not to be used by normal users, it's just to allow you to modify things in the database without having to open the database itself. So you can, for example, change, um, you can change, for example, the, the, the origin of a package, saying package set minus oh, this is my, the new origin of this package, and package ng will try, will, will think that the package is not the same anymore. Package register is done, is only to be used from the from the port tree. You can also use it if you are installing uh, by hand a package, you're compiling it by hand, you, uh, you're compiling something by hand, you install it, and then you say, oh, it would be great if it was tracked in the package, you just create a, a playlist, and you say, package register, please add it in my package database. Package repo is the command to create your database for the remote repository, so you have a bunch of packages, package repo on it. Package shell is basically a SQLite shell you can open uh, on the local database if you want to directly do things on that. It's not recommended at all, but it's still available. It can help debugging. It also have all the, the function we have added to SQL uh, already in it, so it could help. Package shell libraries is, we have an option which is off by default so that a package can track all the, the shell library it depends on. We analyze the binaries uh, the, inside the package and we discover all the shell libraries it will try to load and then we can have a list of them. So if you need to know exactly which shell library, out, not which package, but which shell library is needed for your package, you can just list it using that. Package update is just to fetch the latest metadata. Uh, package upgrade is what is recommended. Each time you have a new version available for your packages, you just, it's recommended to just upgrade the whole set of packages you have. You can do this package by package using package install, but it's recommended to upgrade everything so that everything keeps consistent. Package version is the same as the old package version. Package which is just, you have files somewhere, you don't know where it comes from, you say package which and it will say, this is this package that installed its file. As I said, we have a lot of more metadata that we, we used to have before. So if you install, for example, XPDF, you want to know everything about it, you just use the new minus F option to package info and then you can have all of this. You can, also see, you can also see that all the options used while building the package are tracked in the package itself. You can have the same information from the remote repository so that before, before, installing, uh, before installing a given package, you can <coughs> check if it has the option you want. You can also know the, the size of the package and how much things will, be, will it be need to be downloaded, the size on your file system. This is the two query interface. So we have the normal query, which will query 
the local database, the remote query that will query the, re the remote repositories. With the remote queries, you can specify to query only a given, if you have multiple, multiple repositories, you can just specify, I want this one. So what you can see is that we have an evaluation string, string where you said, I want to check uh, all, the first query is I want to check all the, the package maintained by me, and I want to print the output like the name, dash the version, and then the comment. On the remote, for example here, I want to, to check uh, all the package, which maintainer is uh, glob with bat in it, and where the name is different from fossil. You can have a lot of combination like that, and you can create a lot of things about it. If you don't want to write the, the evaluation string, you still have minus A to create the whole thing. You still have thing, you still have uh, regular expressions. The repository themselves are also an SQLite database. Uh, we have the ability to have a signature. You can sign them. You can also not sign them if you don't want any, uh, any signature checking. You can, do, you can use a lot of different repositories. It's still considered as dangerous because uh, we can only guarantee the, the consistency of the packages on, for, our, for one single repository. But if you want to test, I don't know, the latest Firefox version, you just add a new, a new repository with the package for the latest version and you can test it out of box. Uh, most of the data, the metadata are present in the remote repository. In fact, the only one that is missing in the remote repository are the list of files, otherwise the, the repository will be too big. We are thinking about adding a second file, a second repository with list of files so that if you don't know which package to install that provide the given file, you just query that file, but deactivate it by default. It's compressed and it's searchable. So as I said just earlier, both command install and upgrade can do can upgrade packages. It's not uh, it's real upgrades. It's not just the installing the previous version of the package, reinstalling the new one. It's being able to only remove the files that want that will be will need to be removed. Uh, it overwrites all the other files. Uh, it is able to determine that a package has been split in, in, uh, into species and not have conflict when doing that and order this the right way. It has a lot of people want to be able to I upgrade an uh, Apache and I want the, to I want to automatically restart it uh, in the end of the upgrade. So we have a support for that which is deactivated by default because I don't like it. I think it's too dangerous, but a lot of people are, are asking for it, so we had it. You, you, just, you just have an option to say, okay, I want it on. How to upgrade your system? Basically, uh, you just have to package update to fetch the latest, the latest uh, metadata, and then you package upgrade and it, it's done. With the next version that will come in a in few days, uh, you don't need to run any more package update. It's automatically done by package upgrade. Without any modification, we are able to work on the current port three. On Pointy Hat, we are able to run about uh, 22,000 packages, which is what we are expecting with the old package. So we are almost uh, equivalent, no, no problem. We also added some new features that will help in the that will help to create uh, to add new features to the pottery itself. For example, if you want to add a new keyword, we don't have to change the package tool so that it, under, it understands the new keywords inside the pottery. We can just create a small YAML file with the name of the keyword, and the YAML file just have some actions which are a function inside of PackageNG. So. In that case, DRM will just treat the, um, the arguments of the keyword like uh, if you have written in your plist uh, add DRM, and then it will add two actions, one in post install, one in, uh, in post deinstall. 
one of the features we want to see in long term in the port series is the ability to have a stage directory. Package ng is already aware of that. So you can just say, instead of my files are already installed on my system, my files are, are in this fake root. The roadmap for now, package ng has, will, will still live in the port tree. It will never go into base. But we need base to be able to, in, to have package ng. So we created a bootstrap, which basically is just a package binary. And if package ng is not installed, it will try to fetch it from uh, the official repository and install it with itself. So it's pretty much straightforward. You just install your new system, type package, install something. Package engine is not there. It will fetch it, install it, and do the installation you ask for. After it's installed, you you have to specify a repo. Yeah, it by default it uh, it knows what are the official uh, package, the official uh, repositories. So. It's automatic. You don't have to specify anything, but um, if you if you want to specify your own repository, it respects package site, package uh, root, and stuff like that. Same, yeah, same bootstrap. What happens to the bootstrap binary if you've got a read only user restroom, for example? Exactly. That's what I'm getting at. If, if, if the bootstrap installs package, does it install it in user local? Oh yeah, you user local. Yeah, of course, it installs in user local. And then the bootstrap binary will then call package if it exists. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically what it does. Uh, what still needs to be done to 1.0 is improve a lot our user messages. We still have a lot of messages uh, which are mostly technical warnings like uh, the conflict, SQL, SQL conflict or stuff like that, which are good messages, in, in which are good warnings. We know that if we are at that point, there is a problem, but for the users, it's really not useful. So most of the time, it's just changing, detecting that, that problem, and instead of printing what SQLite say to us or what LibArchive say to us, just having a user-friendly message. So the more people are testing uh, package ng right now, uh, the better the message could be. We have done a lot of fixes recently on that. And we need to have a lot of testers to be able to find as many bugs as possible. We are really close to this candidate, and I want to be able to have package ng 1.0 for the summer. So the more people just report bugs, and the better we'll have a 1.0 release. For the future, we have, uh, we'll soon open uh, package ng 113 uh, so that we can hack on the new features. And we have in my lot of things, one of the things is the security in general, and Capsicum is one of the things we want to, to work on about security. Uh, we want to be able to add better architecture support. Um, it's not directly linked to package ng because package ng is able to to have uh, globing when testing the architecture, but we want to be able to separate the packages into uh, this is not architecture dependent, this is just uh, AMD64, this is just I don't know what, so that we don't have to, uh, to duplicate any packages. Uh, we are thinking about something like a provide feature so that if you have uh, Nginx installed and something needs uh, an HTTP server, it won't try to install you Apache because you just want it at that time, Nginx. It still need to, to be designed because it's quite complicated to deal with, but it's something we really want to see. We want to be able to split the packages so that we just build 
one package and instead of uh, having uh, all the dependency for that, we can just say, okay, this is just the X11 shared library, push that into, separate, uh, into a separate uh, packages and stuff like that. Uh, and we want to have a multi ABI package. So this is mostly for the post three more than with package ng, but we want to be able to install, for example, Wine32 on uh, an AMD64 AMD box and stuff like that. Before going to the question, I don't know if I have time left. Yes. Yeah, so I've prepared um, a simple demonstration to show you some of the features of package ng. Yeah, I don't know where we turn off the light. Yeah. So uh, what I what I will do is create a vanilla jail out of uh, Nino and install Apache on it uh, with package ng. So it's done on this small EPC box. So it could be a little bit slow, but we'll see. So I just prepared the jail. What we need to do once the jail is prepared is to create a package.com file with uh, the link to the repository. It could also be uh, just an environment variab variable. We check for both. So the disk is a bit slow. Um, it, port, port master is just to deal with the port tree. With package ng, you don't have to deal with the port tree at all. But we have. Yeah, uh, we have a patch for port master. Then it can work on top of package ng. Uh, there is also a patch for a port upgrade, which will, should be committed pretty soon. So that port upgrade will also support package ng. And most of the tools that deal with the port tree have patches to work with package ng out of box. So I start the jail. So the first thing to do is to fetch the metadata. So I just, we have an option to deal with jail directly from the host. If you do minus g, the name of the jail, then package ng which, which we run inside the jail without having the need of having package ng in the jail. Does that understand IPA6 shield on HPMD64? Sorry? Does that understand, for example, IPA6 shield on HPMD64? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't care. In fact, it just used the jail function, so... If, uh, if jail support it, it's supported. You just have to have the, the compatibility in your kernel, and it's OK. So now we have the metadata. We are able to search, for example, Apache. So by default, the search is using a regular expression so that you have everything that contains Apache on it. But you can switch the search to have globing or to the search to have uh, extended, extended regular expression. We'll just go to install the latest Apache. So when you install, you don't need actually to, to, do, to give the full name. You can just give Apache. But in that case, we have two packages named Apache. 
So we have to specify the version, or if you want, you can also here add the origin of the package. If you do uh, www uh, Apache 2.2, it will work the same way. Uh, currently, with uh, 1.0, you just have a conflict which will be printed out to the user saying you have to choose one. We are expecting to have um, a more a smarter solver in the future, but uh, it's quite a complicated task. We have, uh, we have a lot of possibility for that. There is uh, the solver from OpenSUSE, which is BSD, li BSD license and works pretty well. There are also some university students uh, that are willing to work on this task. So I pushed this to uh, package ng2. So before installing anything, it will show you all the dependency you will have to install. It will order it for you. It will say to you, OK, I need that disk space. Currently, it doesn't check if you have that disk space available. But it check if uh, the download space available is OK, so that you don't start to fetch anything, and then it stops saying, ah, oh, no space left on the device. In the future, we want to be able to check also the, the space available where you will install the package. But it's a bit more complicated, because we don't know in advance what the partitioning you have done. Ah, we could know, but we have to, to do things for that. You can just do dash y if you don't want to have the prompt. Uh, yes, so there is. Yeah, a port master can can be fully automated. You can have some. Uh, yeah, uh, in package.conf you can add uh, assume yes, and then you you're done. You can also do it as a variable. Yes, every option we have in package.conf could be either in package.conf or uh, an environment variable. So that if you're in a system, you're running everything out of Puppet, for example, and you don't want to push any uh, package.conf on your, on your remote host, you just add the, the environment variable, and then it's OK. So, big uh, over here. Uh, I have just one question. Yes. No. <laughs> it's almost done. I mean, to use your example there, I feel like I wrote Apache 1.3 and you've written Apache 2.0. Yeah. Um, which is to say, you know, you've, you've carried forward pretty much all of the sins that I was guilty of and added a few extra. Uh, I mean, the command set is complex. Uh, it's, I understand compatibility is a huge. Yeah. Thing. Different approach. You can do deduplication and other things underneath if you know this space is truly at a premium, which it generally isn't. But, but ge generally, a PBI is just uh, a flat package without dependency. Mm -hmm. So just create a flat package ng package without the dependency, and then you'll get it. Uh, I've been ab I've been able to to create flat packages quite easily with package ng. I just use the package that are, that are already built, and then I extract them in a fake root, and then I I, uh, I pack all this and I say this is a new package, which is a flat one, and uh, everything is bundled in it, so I don't need any dependency, and it will work. Okay. So on, along the same lines, have you looked at what you can uh, take away from this and still have a viable package management? In other words, how simple can you make this? Yeah. In terms of stripping out extra user commands, stripping out extra flexibility, and just going through the most minimalistic possible package management? No, I prefer the package manager to still be able to do both. I, well, it, it condenses down to one or two commands. That's yeah, as, as a, a, a system engineer at work, I prefer to have small packages and dependency and stuff like that than flat packages. But 
It's true that if I want to provide to any uh, customer a package with something and I want this to work, I, I will in that case do flat packages and give him a flat package saying, okay, it works. So it's different approach, we need both, I think. So now we have installed Apache, we just need to figure out if it works. Uh, forgot the name of the jail. So I can start Apache and I see that it works. So we can install the package and actually see that it's not just installing them, it also works. Yes? Uh, you could. Oh, you got, you, you'll have to manually query. Currently, you have to manually query. If you want that kind of features uh, to, to get in package ng, just go to our website, github slash package ng slash package ng, and at the issue. We'll, we'll soon open the development. Currently, the development is frozen so that we can release uh, one oh, but uh, all the crazy idea you can all have about package ng, just fill an issue on GitHub so that when we'll go to package ng 1.1 or package ng 2.0, we'll just have that in mind and try to go that way if possible. You just need to keep in mind that um, in package ng, we want everything to remain as simple as possible. I prefer not having a feature that having a feature that will work most of the time, but not all the time. Or if we had, we had it, we had it off by default. I suspect that part of what you're talking about is actually more of a ports problem rather than a package problem. Um, like have, having, a package, having, having this version of GB4.2 by default that, that port would pump into package NG, but if you want to use GB4.7, then that's not package NG's fault, that's ports for his fault. Yeah, but that could be solved by um, one of the things that PackageNG will bring to the port tree is new features like uh, installing stuff in the stage directory. And then if we have a stage directory, we could imagine splitting the package. And the reason why DB4, uh, DB4 uh, is, uh, has a problem with DB4.7 is that is they provide the same files. So if we split them and just provide the library, then you say if you can install the latest uh, Apache with DB44, and then you can install, I don't know what you use with DB47. Yes? So my point is that uh, talking about the ports metadata, many uh, times over the years, I've been working on Apache and I think to some lesser extent port master, and then blame for sins, they're actually being blamed for sins that are in the metadata themselves. If you give, uh, if the ports tree has bad metadata, and those tools will faithfully go and do something really bad based on it. One of the other things I wanted to show is uh, an upgrade. Yep, that's here. So, uh, yes? Uh, the question and the comment. The uh, question is... I just launched the video so that people can look at the, the upgrade while you ask the question. I made a video because uh, I wasn't sure we have uh, things here to be able to upgrade. So, yes? Currently, it's several times on the, uh, the var cache DB uh, of every jail. Okay. Uh, uh, it can be fixed by just nullfs, that directory. And I guess it depends on the yeah. um, The comment was to Jordan's point about the UI simplicity or complexity. For some reason, you can't do it. This version of the SDN help tells you, here are the three things that everybody always uses, and then there's an SDN help tell me everything in the world, which for some reason, you can't have lots of Yeah, and all the commands uh, are, do are documented. We have uh, the man page that are up to date now. 
Uh, all the commands are, um, you, we have the help command, so if you don't know how package install works, you just do package help install, and then you have, it will fire up the man page cor corresponding. Yes? So if you No, currently you, we ju you, ju you will just have to package delete minus F to force the deletion of the previous version and install the, uh, install the, previous, install the version you want. You can just specify, oh, I want to downgrade this one. Uh, we have a bug right now in the, in the version that sometimes some drive downgrades are, are put in, uh, in the upgrade process. So, yes, we, we know, uh, we know uh, how to detect the downgrades and we know that we know we could provide this, but I think it's, um, it shouldn't be easy to do because most of the time dangerous, it will just bring you a package which is not consistent with the latest package set we provide to you. So I prefer not having something too easy because a lot of users will just use it and then report bugs everywhere saying, okay, this don't work, this don't work, I just downgraded this, but it's not consistent with the package that we have. It's, it's, not, it's not difficult, it's just not straightforward. Okay. You can just package delete minus F so that it doesn't say, oh, it's depend on by something, so I won't delete it. You just force the deletion and you add it. And when you add the, the old version, the old version will be linked with, uh, with, with um, uh, the package that used to depend on the new version. Okay, what happens the dependencies? The dependencies are cleanly, uh, cleanly handled, but if if the, I don't know, the library is, is uh, not compatible between the new version and the old version, uh, if you downgrade, then your dependency will be, f will be broken. That's not a problem. Well, yeah. So the, with packaging, in that case, the dependency are still, uh, still tracked the, the right way. Yes? Can you, can you like, move your repository back and do a complete rollback downgrade? Currently, no. No. Well, that's no. probably if you want to go through regression. You probably want to go back to what actually worked and not touch the full package. Well, yeah. yeah, one of the features um, I want to be able to do uh, is to be able to roll back like it's done in FreeBSD update. I want to, to say, okay, you have done an action, you're able to roll back to the previous state before this, this action. But uh, it's quite complicated because uh, if you have a huge set of packages, it will require a lot of this space to be able to, to do that rollback. So we need to find something to to deal with cleanly. And uh, yes, in the future, there will be a package a rollback, something like that. Yes? So uh, about the rollback, uh, and what do, you, what do you think about moving uh, package da database to USL local? Because this would allow us to uh, have all the stuff that is related to packages in USL local. And if we have a separate DFS file system for USL local, then we can Easily snapshot and roll back. Yeah. We don't have to snapshot all the two file systems. Yeah. And uh, uh, especially you got var and var and are most of the time the same file system. Uh, we don't want to uh, roll back the entire var. We yes. Don't want to roll back the package yes. Uh, all the directories we used are configurable. So you can say my local the my local uh, database is in slash uh, user local if you want. Uh, it could be a good idea, but uh, I just prefer not changing too much thing at the same time. So first we go to package ng, and then we can do some survey or stuff like that about this idea and just switch at uh, for package one one or something like that. But it's doable with uh, with package ng currently. And yes, uh, using ZFS for the rollback was one of the things I was thinking about like it's done on um, its, uh, not open Solaris, but uh, yeah. The, the package system, which is a crap, but he handled DFS very well. And uh, I'd like to be able to have some kind of hooks or thing like that so that you can do the same things out of package ng. So before installing, you just snapshot user local and then you can roll back and stuff like that. This would be also useful in terms of uh, JS. Yes. Yeah, but one of the things we're thinking about is adding hooks about everywhere in the library. 
so that uh, you can just provide all the script for if you want to manage DFS or if you want to manage uh, if you want to install a package without uh, some files like .h, .a, uh, stuff like that, you can just say, I took the, the normal package, I, and before installing, I just ignored all those files. It's something we're thinking about for uh, 1.1 or 2.0. Is there any other question? Yes? You can't. You just go to package ng uh, one shot. We have a script which is called package to ng, which converts the old database to uh, the new one. But you can't go back. So prepare your backup. That's it. <laughs> prepare your backup or stuff like that. And if you are switching to package ng, do not and still using the the port three. Do not forget to activate package ng in the port three to avoid having both because it's one shot, it's not incremental. We can't continue using uh, the old package and then from time to time saying, oh, uh, I should I have new package, so please upgrade the database. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, are you able to take a package file that's in package ng format and uh, revert it to a previous format for another system? We used we use to do that, uh, but I removed that code because uh, because the, the old package format is uh, really, for example, the p list is not a list of files in the old files. It's a script, which is that thing for there, 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 and there, and then now install a file and stuff like that. So we can move from the old to the new one, saying, okay, all the script goes to post install or goes to uh, pre install, but going the reverse is almost impossible because we are not able to determine that, that particular script should be, uh, for example, in Python, should be uh, executed uh, in the first, in the beginning of, uh, of, the, of the file extraction, but after this file is extracted, so something like that. So, no, we can't create the old package, but we are working on a script that will do the reverse. It means you already have some old format, some legacy format packages, and you want to just convert them into package engine so that it's straightforward to you to install them on the new system. And it's pretty easy to do. I just didn't find time to write the script. Yes? I'm, I'm using package on two or three servers just for my It's really quite nice. Um, the one thing that is missing is, seems to be integration with um, the port three, which is just we talked about, how sort of if I need particular options, Yeah, so for that particular problem, uh, you'd still have to use package register to register your stuff, but uh, we are thinking about something like uh, held command. We say, okay, this package, don't touch it. Uh, this is for, this is uh, something I, I know I have an install and I don't want to, uh, to be upgraded from, from version, but it's, it's complicated because uh, it can lead to inconsistency in the future. The best thing to do to deal with that is to uh, create your own packages and set your own repository and uh, then provide your package in that so that when you install a PHP, you just bump the port revision name in it and then it's always a higher version than the version that is in the official repository and then you'll, you'll, you'll have it uh, installed correctly. One other thing we want to do in the future is just to also add an option saying, okay, this package comes from this repository. If this repository is still there, then it, will, it can only be upgraded from this repository. It's not done yet, but it's something we're thinking about too. And if the, if the repository is not configured anymore, then go back to the normal way. Why can't you just use package directly from the 
You can. Uh, is, no, you don't have to set up your own repository. Uh, package register is done to do exactly the same thing as package add or package install, but from the port tree. So you go in your post like you do currently, you just do make install and then it's installed uh, as package ng. The only thing you have to do currently is to activate it because by default it's still the old uh, system. So to activate it is just adding with package ng equal yes in make.conf and that's all. Yes. I suspect that um, the weaknesses in, in the package up, the default options and the ability to do that kind of thing, I, I suspect this is actually going to bring those issues to a head fairly quickly. We've sort of been working around it because the current system, it, it's fairly easy to sort of substitute bits and pieces and, and, and get by. But I suspect that we'll find out very quickly just how many people are not happy with the default setting on a lot of ports or when there's a, a tree wide version bump or something like that. I think we'll find out fairly quickly. Yeah, and most, most of the time the option on the post tree just had a new, a new file into the package. So we can, if you can split the package, most of the option will be gone, except for things like Nginx or, uh, or Mplayer or stuff like that. But most of the time we can deal with that. And maybe with the provide feature we want to see in, you'll be able to also uh, do some kind of flavors and say, okay, I'm, I'm installing Apache uh, dash uh, that option and it's recorded as Apache and everyone looking for Apache will be happy with it. Yeah, exactly. I, I, just, I just think it's going to bring those issues, it's going to bring a, a crunch on, on that issue and it's not something that we've sort of been forced to deal with because we can sort of fudge around it for, and have been for years and years. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how many bugs we end up on, on windshields over this. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's more of a ports problem than, rather than a packaging problem. Yeah. Okay. Yes? So will this be available on uh, versions prior to 9? Um, I'm waiting for, uh, for the end of line of uh, 8.1 because uh, 8.1 is not able to use um, XZ compression. So as soon as uh, 8.1 is, uh, is out, I'll, I'll MFC the bootstrap into eight, and I could start to create uh, official uh, eight packages. <laughs> By the way, a thing I haven't said is just currently we have uh, we have a re some repository available on pkgbeta.freebsd.org. So if you want to be able to if you want to be able to test, uh, try to update them once a week. Sometimes it's longer, sometimes it's shorter. Um, this, these are just team linked to the new ABI line, so that it's easier for people to, it's easier for people to to find out I'm MD64. Yes. You want to, you want that I do auto remove, but there will be nothing in it. Okay. Yes. Uh, package uh, check minus s. I just delete Apache. 
and then I can do auto remove it detects all the packages that are not needed anymore. Yeah, and it's it's recursive, so you don't have to run it uh, ten times. And the dependency tracking is also done from the port tree. So if you keep just using the port tree, uh, if uh, one of the ports is installed as dependency, it's tracked in the database. How does it know to not remove the ports that I've actually installed? Uh, because when you install a package, we just had a flag in the database saying this package has been installed as dependency and this package has been installed on purpose by the user. You know, when you do a package install Apache, it, I know that Apache is the package you want, not everything that comes with it. If you had the globbing, all the package that matched the globbing will be marked as uh, wanted by the user. So the auto remove will remove anything that was installed as a dependency and, was also, uh, and avoid things that, were, that are a dependency of something else or were installed manually, is that it? Yeah. Okay. Now, this could be integrated with the port tree so it could remove all the little crap. It's, it's integrated in the port tree. So if, if you I, just go to a single port, you have fresh installation, you activate package ng, you go to a single port, make install, it will install a bunch of things, uh, including lib tool and stuff like that. Okay. Once it's installed, you just do package to remove, and all the things that were only build dependency will be dropped. That's exactly. Yes? <laughs> Yeah. Package. Yeah, with, with package set, you can say package set. Uh, we have some keywords. Which one of them is uh, percentage A for automatic percentage A uh, equal one, and then you mark it as automatic. And if something goes wrong from I don't know what reason, but you have all the automatic stuff that has been dropped, you can say package minus, uh, uh, you can say automatic equals zero, zero. you can change it by hand, and uh, as usual you have uh, the choice to do that on world, the world packages or just some packages using globbing, using you know, a regular expression. What happens if you modify part of the package? No. Uh, we just say uh, this file, while well, we're removing it, says this file has been modified, I won't drop this file, but the rest is removed. So it does Yeah, it does keep it. Except if you have modified the thing on purpose and then you, you are willing to track it normally, you can, with package checks, do uh, recreate all the checksums, because I know what I do, and then the, the, the files won't be considered as modified anymore. Yeah. Yes. What functionality are you talking to in terms of the future of the dependence on the only old package you get tomorrow? It's more about, uh, for example, if I want to be able to split packages, uh, I want the post tree to be able to understand what is a stage directory. And uh, doing that with the old tools is pretty much very, very complicated. So if I can drop it, it would be easier. The other thing is that uh, I want to kill most of the scripts we have uh, in the pod tree. Uh, uh, we have a lot of things like uh, exec, unexec, and stuff like that, which are not reviewed by security officer. It can't be reviewed because there is everywhere in the pod tree. And I want to be able to add a lot of new keywords. And on, in those keywords, we have the script, which is human readable. And then we can, if we have any problem with security, we can just ask any security officer or someone that knows about security to review things in one single place with just the script there. And in very long-term goal, I want to get rid of any script at all, providing something else to be able to do cross-installation of packages and stuff like that. Yes? One quick question. Say for example, <coughs> configuration files. We, many of our existing stuff has like foo.conf.default and, and also provides a foo.conf which doesn't override the previous line that was already there from the previous installation. 
Yeah. Uh, handled more elegantly. So uh, that's done in, uh, with the current packages using script at exact something. Uh, what we've done in that in package ng, you can create uh, just a file calling it uh, dot package conf, and if we find this file and there is no file without this extension, we just create a new one. And if there is already a file, we keep the, the configuration done by the users. So essentially, you can set it up so that it'll, so it'll take the equivalent of the dot default to install yeah. the, the user editable one and then take and, and not mess with it in the future. Yeah, we, we have the feature. I don't know how it will be used uh, by the maintainers and people like that, but we have the feature to avoid the, the script that did that before. Of course, that's a bonus point you can freeway make it an upgrade, but that seems to yeah. happen. <laughs> But after that, we could imagine some scripts that just detect that there is a new version of the configuration and, uh, and prompt you, uh, you have to merge this, like merge master or stuff like that. If there is an upgrade script, you actually could format it. Sorry? If there is an upgrade script specifically, if there is an upgrade, you could format the file. Yes. The, the upgrade scripts are also a reason why uh, we can't, currently, we can't use upgrade script. If we want compatibility with the, package, the old package install, because the old package install don't know about upgrades, so if we want to push uh, the upgrade script in most of the in most of our ports and most of our package, we need to get rid of package install, for example. Okay, thank you. Ha, 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 ha.